Most realtors are familiar with the concept of home staging, but how exactly does it impact how quickly a home will sell? How does it affect the offer price? And is it even worth it to stage a home in a hot market like we're seeing now? Adriana Torres, owner of Stage and Amaze Home Staging Company in Fort Myers, has the answers on the Royal Palmcast, which begins right now. You're listening to the Royal Palmcast, the show about all things real estate. From the production studios of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association in Fort Myers, Florida, here's your host, Jim Sandville. Thank you, Jerry Johnson, and welcome to the Royal Palmcast. I'm your host, Jim Sandville. We are here in the studios of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association in beautiful, sunny Fort Myers, Florida today. We have a very special guest in our studio today, and uh, we're going to get a lot of good information out there for you. Lots. And uh, first, I want to say hi to our pal over on the board, Jerry Johnson. Jerry, how are you? Hey, Jim. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, Let me check. Jeez, not bad. <laughs> that joke that joke always lands, doesn't it, Jerry? Yeah, you're you nail it every time. That is comedy gold. I'm it told. Is. I'm told. The best. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we, we do want to thank you for, for uh, joining us today. We, we're the show that talks about all things real estate. We talk about every aspect of it uh, from the perspective of the buyer, the seller, and especially the realtor. Uh, and especially our realtor members here in the Fort Myers, Cape Coral area, who we love dearly. And so we want to get some good information out there for you right now. We're going to do that with our guest. I will uh, delay no further and introduce you to uh, Adriana Torres from Stage and Amaze. Welcome, Adriana. <laughs> Thank you, guys, yeah. Jim and Jerry. I am so excited to be here today. We are. I think every one of us is excited. Every one of us. One and two. Yeah, every one of us. <laughs> yeah, and I know Adriana is excited to be here, as she just said. So. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a thousand questions, as I told you when you first came in here yes. a few minutes ago, Adriana. And uh, I have all I can do not to ask you before we started recording. So <laughs> I'm bursting at the seams. So first off, let me tell me about yourself a little bit. Where are you from and how did you get happen again to the staging business oh my goodness okay let me go back i'm um, originally from colombia came to the states 20 years ago pursuing my master's degree my background is in business and marketing um never really did any design um education moved to the states 20 years ago with the idea of going back to colombia to um, work in my family business alongside with my dad. Well, uh, you know how those things work. I met my husband. We used to live in California, and here I am 20 years later. <laughs> wow, wow, do you prefer Florida to California? I you love California. <laughs> California love is pretty California. sweet. That's my favorite state, <laughs> I have to Florida. say, <laughs> I miss California even after so many years. We still have family, we visit often, not as often as I wish. But every time we go, we just we just love it. Are we um, talking NorCal, Southern California? We, when I met my husband, we were in the Bay Area, uh -huh. uh, close to San Francisco, and then we moved down to San Diego, where we lived for about oh, three years. My favorite and city. Isn't that absolute, a great city? It's so hard to beat. They I'm sorry. A, they have a zoo there, don't they? <laughs> and the Coronado, Coronado Hotel, yep. yeah. It is just gorgeous, yeah. so we, um, we miss it, but we are thankful for Florida because it's really been our home for the last 15 years. Mm, yeah. Uh, what's what's the city just south of San Diego where we stayed? Uh, Chula Vista? No. Close to the border? No. no. Right, next to, right next to San Diego. Um, um, Mission? It's mispronounced frequently. I, La Jolla. La Jolla. Oh, La Jolla. Oh, Oh boy, it's one of my favorite place, places. We used to yes. live about 10 minutes from La Jolla. Looks like La Jolla to the native <laughs> English. I was going to ask you. <laughs> What's is, the misspelling? La Jolla, but it it's is, La Jolla. Yes, La Jolla. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, but anyway, back then, the market, the real estate market was so, so hot. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to start a family and uh, we really couldn't afford the prices there. So mm -hmm. we started looking at places and um, we narrowed down a couple of states and Florida was among one of them. And uh, the reason for picking Florida was because it would allow us to be closer to home. I'm from Colombia, like I said, my husband is from Chile. So um, traveling, all the way to California for our families was really hard. So we figured Florida would be more of a central place. And um, we started applying for jobs and we ended up in beautiful Southwest Florida. So we've been here for 15 years. I used to work um, back then in human resources. That was my, you know, my corporate career. 
Um, then came the babies. <laughs> so I was working when my first uh, daughter was born. Um, then my second one came and um, I just took some time off from work. I just wanted to be with them, being that we did not have any family close to us. And then when I was ready to return to work, I said, well, I don't really feel necessarily like I want to go back to corporate. Um, I would like to do something on my own. And uh, my husband, he um, was in mortgages back in the day. So um, kind of was familiar with the real estate industry and I decided to create a home staging business really out of passion of watching HGTV. <laughs> HGTV, huh? I, I've yes. seen it. Wow, that launched your career. Uh, yes, I should say that. Which, um, what shows in particular were you? Um, gosh, I forgot the name of this show with Sabrina Soto. Um, I can't remember the name, but, but uh, she was my star. Like I would see her, how she would transform these homes with the homeowners furnishings and just bring in a couple of details and move things around. I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks so much fun and that makes so much sense. But I decided to start this business back in 2011 when the market was very still low, depressed. So, um, you know, here I am knocking on realtors doors and calling to see if they would be interested in having a stager come to educate the realtors and they would be telling me, why do we want to stage homes when properties are selling, short sales, foreclosures, in the condition they're in, we don't need you, like, really. I'm like, well, the market's going to turn, and at some point, when it turns, you're gonna need our services, and I'm gonna be here for you. There you go. <laughs> so that's really how I got into real, I mean, into um, home staging. Uh -huh. um, it was a low, slow start because of the market conditions. So I really did a lot of um, my friends and neighbors. Then my husband got into real estate as well. So I would do some of his you know, listings, and even though they didn't need to be staged because they would sell in the condition they were in. But I'm like, well, let's show them the best possible way. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I started. So you were lugging furniture around and uh, the, all the heavy lifting? In the beginning, I started renting from local companies, which was a very big challenge because the options were very limited and the style of the furnishings were very, very limited. Well, who rents furniture? Um, there's a couple of local stores, Aaron's Furniture, oh, okay. but they're, right. you know, I didn't know they rented is, a short term. Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. They do. So um, I started investing in our own inventory of accessories and artwork. I said, well, if the furniture is not going to be the greatest looking, at least we have to offset that with um, nice looking accessories and pillows and, you know, higher end stuff. So we started building our inventory, started storing everything at my mom's garage. Um, then the garage wasn't big enough. Then we rented a storage unit, then two, then three. And then that got out of hand also, moving things from one storage unit to the other. And then we went to a warehouse. Um, it was a 2,000 square feet warehouse. So that was, you know, it, it was, yeah, yeah, substantial improvement in terms of space. At that point I said, well, um, we've saved some money to start buying our own furniture. So we did, but with that came the need of a truck of course, and the movers, <laughs> because I couldn't yeah. move everything with my assistant, who is, by the way, still working with me, and she's been amazing. She's mm -hmm. been with me for seven What's or eight name? years, Claudia. Ah. So, um, yeah, I got to the point where we needed more help, mm -hmm. um, and now we're into a bigger um, warehouse, 5,000 square feet, which has been great, and um, here we are serving the market's needs. And you're based here in Fort Myers. We are in Fort Myers, but we cover a pretty large area. Really, we go where our realtors need us to go. I would say our area goes from um, Punta Gorda all the way to Marco Island. Oh, okay. We do a lot of work in Naples, a lot. Um, and then Fort Myers, Fort Myers and Cape Coral. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you have just one location, right? Yes, yeah. we are based off of Fort Myers. Our warehouse is very close to Metro and Crystal area. Uh -huh. So that allows us uh, flexibility to take 75 down to Naples and then go over to Cape Coral when when we need to. Mm -hmm. Bob's so your uncle, simple. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so before I dive too deeply into the uh, minutia, the details of staging, uh, let, let's uh, take a step back and, and let me ask you uh, exactly what is staging and why is it important? Okay, so staging is strategic design of properties that are for sale. 
everything that we bring into a home is strategically thought of and we've looked at the pictures, we've previewed the property, we have um, done our planning um, so that every single piece that comes into this house has a purpose um, and will be the appropriate piece in terms of scale, colors, um, and layout. We are not interior designers, and that's always what I try to explain to clients. Um, we are not designing this house for you. You are selling it, and the minute you decide to list your home, it becomes a product. When you list your home, you have to market your product. And that's what staging is. It's a marketing tool, a strategic marketing tool for uh, your property. So we are not designing for the client. And actually, sometimes it's a little bit challenging to explain cl to clients that it's not that we don't want to consider their opinion in the whole process. It's just uh, we are trained in the art of staging and we know what it takes to sell homes. So um, if they get involved, their personal taste gets involved. And it's not necessarily what the potential buyers are looking for. We That's why you hire an interior designer to design the mm -hmm. place for your own mm -hmm. you know, enjoyment. But uh, home staging is really the art of staging strategically. I mean, decorating homes strategic strategically uh, with the objective of selling faster and for more. So at a very basic level, home staging means uh, filling a house or uh, designated rooms with furniture and furnishings that can include walls, ceilings, floors, rugs, you name it, right? Everything. So we bring furnishings, uh, rugs, artwork, lamps. Um, lamps are huge. Lighting is so important. Um, accessories, pillows, bedding. The only thing we don't bring really is window treatments just because, as you know, once they're installed, they become part of the property. Um, so we don't do that. So they'd have to be sold with the house? Correct. Ah. Yes. So That's we don't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It becomes a fixture, but everything else we do. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, staging can also be virtual, correct? Yes, <laughs> yes, staging can also be virtual and we see a lot of um, increase in the virtual staging of properties, uh, which is a great alternative in terms of affordability because of course you're paying maybe between 30 to $60 per image that you stage. However, the impact of um, a buyer when they walk through the home, let's say they've seen the property stage, virtually staged online and they're right. so excited because they think it's, it looks great. So they're walking into the property thinking, okay, this is the house that had that beautiful, you know, sectional around the fireplace, whatever. They walked into the house and it's empty. So suddenly it's a little bit disappointing mm. and confusing. So um, it is a great tool if you're on a budget and you know you can't do anything else, the house is vacant, well, show at least virtual staging. But it's a little bit confusing and not as effective when the buyers walk in. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, when, you, when you stage, do you generally do the whole house or do people have you do just one or two rooms sometimes? So from our experience, we normally recommend staging what we call the high impact areas of the home. So that would be where the heart of the home takes place. So living room, dining room, if there is a separate family room, a breakfast area, um, those are must stage rooms. And we also recommend staging the master bedroom in every house, just because it is the key bedroom. Um, and we see this a lot in older homes these bedrooms look smaller when they're empty. When we provide furnishing, suddenly the dimension changes and suddenly the room doesn't look that small. So it's always a great idea to, to stage the master bedroom and any other room or area that might be um, a focal point or, or where we might want to uh, lure buyers into staying in longer. For example, if you have an outdoor um, lanai that's you know gorgeous pool or beautiful water view we want them to linger longer in those areas so definitely we recommend staging that um, or for example if you have a very small room or just sometimes awkward layout um, then we recommend staging those but if they're just additional bedrooms with normal size you know dimensions uh, we normally leave those empty mm -hmm. And by the way, just to go back to virtual uh, uh, staging again, you, that's a service you provide, right? We don't provide oh, virtual don't. staging. No, you we don't, don't provide virtual that's staging. Um, we can refer some, some of our clients that 
really need virtual staging to some um, software. Yeah, uh, yes, or uh, some of our photography partners. They do great, really great work with uh, virtual staging. Huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, we're in a hot market now, as I think you're aware. Very. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're a busy, busy, busy woman. So uh, how much do you need staging in a hot market? Is, the, is, it, is it necessary? I think it's even more important to stage in a hard, hot market than it is when it's not as hot. And the reason is you don't want to leave any money on the table. If you have a pool of 20 buyers looking at the house, you have a much higher chance of getting a higher offer when that property is totally amazing because they don't want to miss the opportunity of getting that house. So if anything, this is the time to really um, stage those properties, make sure that they look amazing, make sure that you take advantage of the market because people would bid, will bid higher. Um, also, we're, we're seeing you know, the, the increase, slow increase in pricing of these properties is becoming uh, it's making it tricky for appraisal values to come in so when the property is staged suddenly the appraiser it's something mental um, emotional that happens uh, suddenly it appraises better so absolutely mm, cool we got that maximum potential absolutely yeah. now you must have a lot of data or uh, evidence that uh, shows that a staged house brings more uh, a higher offer right absolutely about statistically and these are statistics conducted by the real estate staging association and the Nas national association of realtors as well mm -hmm. um, staged properties sell, sell up to 17 percent higher mm. in price mm. it's, and 67 uh, percent faster that's a noticeable amount when you're talking about hundreds of thousands yes. of dollars I'm, I'm not good at math jerry but i'm thinking <laughs> it makes sense to stage here yes staging uh, is good i've got a hundred more questions and i'm going to save them for after the break we're going to take a very quick pause and we'll be right back to you right after this I'm Molly Schweers, and you're listening to the Royal Palmcast. Hi, I'm Vince Motorelli from Habitat for Humanity of Lee and Henry Counties. You're listening to the Royal Palmcast. This is Cecilia Scholthorpe, and you're listening to the Royal Palmcast. In these challenging times, the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association continues to adapt, providing evolving resources and education for our members. We're here to serve our members with comprehensive, new, innovative, and alternative platforms. Through member engagement, community involvement, and ongoing advocacy for property rights, we're committed to empowering Realtors with superior service and advancing support for our fellow neighbors. In Southwest Florida, RPCRA is your association. Do you own a second home or a vacation property? Do you rent it out to vacationers? Local governments across Florida are over-regulating your ability to rent out your property. RPAC fights these regulations and defends the rights of homeowners across Lee County and Florida. Invest as little as $20 in RPAC today to help us fight unwanted government regulations. For more information or to invest, contact Kevin Besser, the Director of Public Policy at kevin at rpcra.org. Welcome back to the Royal Palmcast. I'm Jim Sandville, still here with Jerry Johnson. Yes, I'm, I'm still here too. You know who else is here, Jerry? I, I do. Who? Adriana who? Torres. Adriana Torres <laughs> is correct. She's an awesome um, stager. Is correct. She is a stage mom. And, no, no, that's a different thing altogether. Jerry's a stage dad. Did you know you guys yes. have that in common? Awesome. Yeah, I just, yeah, but I we stage a uh, child, not a house. <laughs> yeah. His son, Michael, watch out for, for Michael. He's going to be a big, a big uh, name in this no, we're industry. We're working on it. Yeah. Work in yeah. progress. Yeah, in any event, in any event, we, we don't need to talk about stage moms right now because that's not at all what you do. You're a home stager, correct, Adriana? Correct. All right. You, you work here in Fort Myers, as we've been discussing. And as as we took the break, I was feverishly writing down questions because I, I, I have so many. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I don't uh, repeat any, though. But this is the question that came up during the break for me. After the home is successfully staged, you, you typically leave the furnishings in until a contract is signed or when do you take the furnishings out? So we, we always recommend um, keeping the furnishings until your inspection has passed and your appraisal has been uh -huh. completed. Especially the appraisal, Especially right? Especially the appraisal. And I know a lot of times people get um, anxious to get the furnishings removed because in our case, we rent those on a monthly basis. There are some companies that will rent 
mm, three months at a time, for example. Mm. In our case, we want to give clients the opportunity of, you know, you don't have to pay anything extra if your house is sold in two weeks and you got your contingencies done, then we'll remove everything. Um, so sometimes they don't want to extend the rental and we tell them, keep it in place. You might pay a little bit more, but you don't want to start from zero again. Yep. And we just actually got news yesterday about a house that was ready to be destaged and they got the um, appraisal back and it didn't appraise. So now it's back on the market. So it's never a good idea to remove until you have your contingencies mm-hmm. cleared. Now, has this, has this scenario ever happened to you where a home sells and, and the, the furnishings are still in the home? The, the new owner says to you, I love the furnishing so much, I want to buy them all. All the time. <laughs> and what do you say? We sell them, of course. You do we, sell yes, them. Yes, we sell them. We see it a lot because of the amount of second home buyers in our area. A lot of people from up north, their style is different. So when they come here and they see a property that's been beautifully designed and furnished and that is screaming Florida lifestyle here, just move, they want to move in right away. So yes, that's an option that we give to our to our clients. Yeah, turnkey is a big draw. It makes, yeah. makes a lot of sense. I yes. mean, somebody, obviously you and your staff put in a lot of time and thought mm-hmm. into furnishing that specific home. Correct. So uh, that's a lot of work that they would have to do. And it, it's a designer. win-win situation because it helps us rotate our inventory, sure. but it also saves them a lot of money. If they were to hire a designer to start from scratch, they would pay a lot of money so it's just win-win all the way sure yeah that's that sounds great um you know i also uh, have a, a, a question about the lived-in look mm-hmm. is it ever appropriate to have you know what i mean by the lived-in look yes <laughs> i just <laughs> I came every, from one of them <laughs> everyone does uh, our studio has that lived-in look it does jerry you've been bucking up bucking out here at night yeah yeah that's what i do i sleep here <laughs> Over on a the lot couch. <laughs> all right so uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts around that do, do you ever have pushback from people saying it doesn't look natural or lived in it's too sterile like you know um we don't because our designs are made so that the the property looks appealing and inviting and homey but it doesn't look like don't touch don't sit here um like it's too much no velvet so, ropes <laughs> no no so it's just enough to really connect emotionally because it's in the end what we want to connect emotionally with buyers so that they say this is it um but without them feeling like oh no this is too much this is probably not for me it's it's too upscale or it's too elegant or it doesn't belong one thing that we always always um ask our realtors and our sellers is who do you think will potentially buy this home who is uh your your neighborhood what is your neighborhood like who are we trying to bring here because it's one thing to decorate a house for let's say a couple that's retired and that's uh, just moving here without kids um, and they're a boater or golfers versus a young family with kids um, you know little kids that still need space for for kids activities, etc. So um, when we ask all those questions, that gives us a good idea of, okay, this is what that buyer is looking for. This is the lifestyle that we're after. So we portray that into our designs. And that's, I guess, what makes it so such success, I guess, in how fast our property, our stage, our stage property sell is because they've been planned ahead and with the potential buyer in mind. Hmm. I'm going to give you my perceptions of how staging, uh, kind of the staging hierarchy. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. The the worst situation is leave the current owner's things in there and run the risk it's going to be untidy, which is maybe often the case. Mm-hmm. The next worst would be an empty house. Yes. And then staging would be. Yes, you are correct. The worst thing that somebody can do is not do anything to the house and list it the way it is. What do you do with when you have tenants? Are you selling a duplex? You can, if you have people or living there, or if you are living in your home, definitely the house needs to be staged more so, actually, because we live in our homes the way we are used to. What you know, the way we design our homes is what works for us, but it's not necessarily what works for showcasing the property or for highlighting the property's features. And I see, for example, it just came to my mind. I see this all the time. We walk into homes where they have a beautiful view, so. People who live in the home want to enjoy the view, so they 
put the couch right in front of the big window. Well, guess what? When you walk into the home, the first thing you see is not the view, is the back of the couch. So we can't stage a house to sell like that. We have to stage for for to highlight the property's features so that our eyes don't go to the back of the couch, but they go to the view. So that's the difference that it makes, you know, when, when you stage a house to live and to sell, it's it's two very different things. So when the house is occupied, definitely, definitely you have to stage. But do you, do you ever um, use the furniture that's there and just rearrange it and then yes. add on to it kind of thing? Yeah, so in most cases for our occupied homes, what we do is we don't do an initial walkthrough of the house and we say, okay, um, you have valuable pieces that we can use. Uh, And then you have others that might not be that great. (laughs) Maybe they're dated uh, or maybe they're just in bad condition. So we tell the sellers what pieces of their own furnishings we are planning on incorporating in our design and we supplement the rest. Um, In the end, it's going to neutralize a lot of the furniture, uh, a lot of the style. Um, And uh, when we put it together, we'll rearrange those furnishings that they have, maybe move things out that don't need to be in the room. A lot of the times we, we see this a lot. Um, they have People have too much that we don't need when the time to sell a house comes. Um, so we'll move the excess pieces out of the room, we'll create the proper flow, we'll bring in our um, staging furniture, our decorative pillows, different artwork, and the house looks 100% different. You must have uh, challenges occasionally. For example, uh, you're going to stage a house where someone is living in, maybe it's a rental house, so the tenant is there, and you walk in to see what you can do, and it's like a hoarding situation. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> really? What do, you, what do you say or do? Eclectic and overcrowded. So in that case, um, we during the consultation, our idea is to come up with an action plan so that the homeowner or the tenant implements that before we come and stage. Um, so if they're a hoarder, they're going to have to remove those items either to storage not to the garage and not to closets because buyers will look there mm-hmm. and we don't want to send the wrong message. Under the rug's no good either. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. nice. So um, normally there, you know, when they've hired us to provide the service, they're open to the, these suggestions, these recommendations. And it's funny because many times realtors have made those suggestions. Well, they don't listen to the realtors as much as they listen to us. So it's, you know, maybe because they think, well, it's coming from a staging company. Um, I don't You're know the why. professionals, yeah. I, I don't know, but realtors, they've come to me and they said, well, I had already told them to do that, but yet they didn't listen. Yeah. I'm glad you came and suggested the same. Well, you've got the built-in credibility that comes from your position and being good at it and being well-known, so it pays off for that you. That helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I could go on and on and on, as I have mentioned several times i went on and on about that i think but i have so many questions on (laughs) so many questions adriana that i'm going to see if you can do me a favor can we record maybe a couple more shows after this so absolutely make sure i get everything that's awesome oh yes that's cool yeah so we'll talk about specific aspects of of staging in a a couple of other shows uh but uh, now actually is my favorite time of the program you know what this is this is the lightning round The lightning round is where we get to know you a little bit better, Adriana, as a person. Not just Adriana the stager, Adriana the woman. So now we're going to find out about some of your favorite things, your likes, dislikes, and so on. She's shaking, Jim. Are you you up for it? I'm up for it. You're up for it? (laughs) Here comes the lightning round. Now, now lightning round day, by the way, is a big day for Jerry because uh, with the questions for the lightning round, we keep them in a uh, in a super box on three by five index cards, and these are the official game show host cards, so they're the real deal. Yeah, they're in a super box on Lehigh Acres. So this morning, At Jerry Jerry got up very, very early. Very early. He drove out to Lehigh Acres and picked them up from the super box. Jerry, it's a long drive. I may know. I have the questions? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's the there's the box. The super. You get the box. Oh, yeah. And there you go, Jim. Is that the whole, that that's, the whole that's deck? That's all kit and caboodle. Awesome. Not just the kit, here. but the caboodle as well. Caboodle, <laughs> kit, they're all here. Okay, they seem to be all here, Jerry. And Adriana, right. without any further delay, you ready? I am ready. All right, here's the first question. Uh, if you if you didn't live in Florida, where would you live? Colorado. Ooh. Where and when is the last place you saw snow? 
Colorado. I, I knew that was coming. I, I was expecting that. California for the first one. <laughs> How long ago was the uh, the trip to Colorado? Uh, December. Oh, last so month. Just a f- oh. couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! How deep was the snow? Um, you know, it was a little bit of a drier season this year, at least when we went. So um, I don't know exactly. Um, it was manageable four, though. Huh? Four feet. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you a skier? Yes, I have become one. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm a skier too. You know, I lost my but first wedding ring in Colorado. Oh my! I went God, there for really? my honeymoon. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> Put my hands in the snow for the first time. Shook it off like going. Wow, that's really cold. <laughs> ring gone. Didn't notice for four hours. Oh, well, I'm going out there to look for it, Jerry. Oh, it's been replaced. <laughs> Get me one of the metal detectors, <laughs> okay. like from the beach. So yes. I'm going. Uh, okay, now let's talk about some of your guilty pleasures. So, w- w- what what what's a guilty pleasure? Just just give me one that you typically don't reveal. Something you don't want anyone to know about until see. now. Um, I guess ice cream. Oh, that's not <laughs> not illegal, <laughs> not illegal. But that's a good guilty pleasure. That's a good one. All right, now tell me about some of your favorite things. Your favorite TV show? Um, Property Brothers. I knew it. How about food? Italian. Favorite chain restaurant? Uh, Carabas. And your favorite book? Five love language languages. Five love, love languages. languages. Not familiar with that. Hmm. Yep. I'll have to look that up. Yep. Uh, and what's your favorite furniture style? Um, I would say modern coastal. Modern coastal. Now I'm a mid-century modern kind of guy myself. What is what is modern uh, coastal? So it's the lighter colors incorporated with some um, organic you know, touches, wood, some metals as well. My favorite color, in, in case it's on your list, is yes. blue. <laughs> blue, I was just gonna add, that was next on the list. Was so off. maybe, I don't know, Modern Coastal goes really well with okay. blue. It, it brings a lot of peace and like soothiness, so yeah. I like it. Yeah, it makes sense here on the Modern and, Coast. And for our listeners who can't see, she is wearing blue today. Oh, yes. She is, she is. <laughs> she is indeed. Okay, who's your uh, personal hero? I would say my dad. Oh, uh, now changing the subject here a little bit. Socks with sandals, yes or no? No. Definitely no. And that's from a designer, folks. <laughs> there you go. So that yeah, she, she's a she's she's got credibility. <laughs> uh, do you do any imitations, Adriana? I don't. I think you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't. Are you going right. to make me do it? I, I would have if you, admit, if you would have admitted to it, I would have. But All right, now uh, I hold my hand last lightning round question, and here it is. You get one bucket list item. What is it? Mm, skydiving. Sky I'm so diving. afraid of doing it, but I think it's something I would like to do. Yeah? Have you yeah. bungee jumped? Anything no. like that? Nothing. Huh? No. You tried indoor skydiving? No, no, I haven't. That's one way. I predict within a year you will be jumping out of airplanes. Probably. I don't know. Perfectly <laughs> good airplanes. It's just, I want to challenge myself to yeah. overcome that fear yeah, i guess there you yeah, go. That's, yeah that's awesome that's that sounds like a lot of fun yeah uh all right that sadly is the end of this Aww. program but I, I am i am very appreciative that you've agreed to come back for a couple more so we will uh we will wait until then with the rest of our questions so i want to say thank you listening audience for being there for us jerry and i have enjoyed being with you and being with adriana for the last uh, few minutes and uh, getting to know a little bit about staging a subject about which i am completely ignorant How about you, Jerry? (laughs) I'm much more educated now, and we're going to learn more with our next few episodes. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Hey, I want to thank everybody here at the Realtor Association, uh, including Beata Jones. She is our CEO. She is very supportive of our podcast. We also have another podcast that you are invited to listen to when it's convenient for you on any platform you choose. That's called Realtor Riff Rap, and the host is Nick Bejealous. We have a YouTube TV show called Realtor's Corner that co-hosts Nick and Joanna Rowell. So we invite you to check that out as well. You can find uh, our podcast. Well, you found it, so I don't need to tell you where to find it. I'll just skip that. Hey, uh, Adriana, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Um, They can go to our website, stageandamaze.com, or they can give us a call, 239-228-228. Three nine five one. All right, cool. Uh, I want to uh, let you know that you can reach us if you have any questions that you would like answered by a future guest. Tell us, uh, tell us what they are, and you can you can uh, send us an email to shows at rpcra.org. 
and we will love to hear from you. If you're listening out there and oh, I don't know, I'll pick a random city, Boardman, Oregon. I noticed was a, <laughs> we have downloads from there regularly. So Yeah, I heard. Boardman, hello. Shout outs from Fort Myers. Hello. Come on down yeah. and visit us. And uh, we're looking for uh, show topic ideas too, so please send those in to the we shows at rpcra.org. We would love to hear from you. All right. Again, my name is Jim Sanville. I want to thank you for listening and we'll look forward to talking with you again next time. Thanks for listening to the Royal Palmcast. Be sure to listen again each week. Share and subscribe on your favorite podcast app or YouTube. And be sure to check out our sister podcast, Realtor Riff Rap, and our video news show, Realtor's Corner, which can be found on the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association Facebook page and YouTube channel. For information about sponsorship opportunities for this and other RPCRA productions, email us at shows at rpcra.org. This has been a production of the Royal Palm Coast Realtor Association. Thank you.